All right, well, Mr. Greg, take it away. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Um, Greg Bray with uh, Blue Tangerine, excited to be here. And love this technology. I, I remember learning about it several years ago uh, when it was still rather new. I think I was one of the earlier ones to hear about it <laughs> um, and how much it's evolved since then. But there's still also kind of this idea that that it's just about the tour, you know, and just about letting them in uh, when nobody else is around to unlock the door for them. And Barrett kind of hinted at how it's evolved and grown so much further beyond that now. Uh, but they're still missing some opportunities, I think, in general uh, across builders and that we want to kind of talk about. And I wanted to start with just this idea of stepping back and going, what, what happens when we recognize a self-guided tour in the context of a lead capture moment? A lead capture moment. Uh, not just about getting someone in the house, but we're actually getting a lead at that moment when we, when we do that. And of course, we know that our buyers are all starting online, um, somewhere between 96 and 100% based on uh, <laughs> stats from yesterday. Um, <clears throat> and so are we then utilizing this opportunity of the lead capture on the website and how do we connect that back? So when we talk about lead capture, there's kind of, there's lots of different places we could go and we don't have all day but I just wanna talk about maybe two key elements regarded with lead capture. And the first one is helping make an emotional connection with between the buyer and your product, right? You want them to fall in love with this house, don't you? That's the easiest sell, right? They're in love with the house. And when we talk about the website, we do all this work to help them fall in love with the house. We, we spend all this money on tours and, and all the digital assets. And we like, we want them to learn how to visualize it. And then we forget the best asset we have of all to help them fall in love with the house is the house. If we can actually get them inside the house, as opposed to watching tours, don't we have a much better opportunity to get them to fall in love with the house? Um, home, sorry, I should say house. It's a home, it's a home. Um, and now granted, I need to be completely clear. I am a big believer in the buy online future that's here now for many builders and coming and, and all of that. But I do not believe that it's an unassisted, never visit buy online future. I, I believe that, that it's definitely still using the opportunities. Now there will, will be times where you can't build a model for everything that you offer, and, et cetera. And you're gonna need the, the digital assets to support that. But for the ones that you've invested in, especially the inventory that's available, what better way to make an emotional connection than to get them in the house? And as marketers and on the website, are we considering that as part of the journey? I love this quick quote uh, from Zig Ziglar, people don't buy for logical reasons, they buy for emotional reasons. And that includes the men in the room, okay? Just so we're clear. We all are emotional first and then we justify those decisions. Again, we want them to fall in love. The next piece of that journey is the idea of, or the, the lead capture process, is we have to show them where we want them to go next. Buying a home is a long process. It's a complicated process. It's different from almost anything else we ever buy in our lives. And we usually haven't done it very many times. Um, you know, most people don't buy a home every week. Um, and, and we, as people in the industry, are much more comfortable with what that process looks like compared to our customers. So we need to be prepared to show them the way. And we can't jump from step two to step 10. We have to sell them on step three first and sell them on step four before we get there. So where does touring fit in all of that is a question that you need to step back and consider. Is that step three, step four, step five? When do we want to put that in front of them? When do we want to say? Barrett talked about a lot of drive-by in the moment, but how many people are on your website that never drive by? It's a much larger audience, much larger opportunity to get in front of them. <clears throat> so in this idea of who is this for, just a, a quick um, segue, Blue Tangerine did an attitudinal research study uh, not too long ago, and we don't have time to get into all the, the details. There is a small link there if you're interested in getting uh, more of the data. But we found that there were four key segments of buyers, and, and this was not predetermined, uh, it came out of the way they answered the survey. And they all, interestingly enough, were roughly a quarter. Not every buyer has the same interest in interacting with people, <laughs> all right? And it's not necessarily driven by age demographics either. In spite of that great age uh, and generational uh, presentation last night that was really interesting, 
Um, we found that people who prefer talking to a builder versus prefer online interactions went completely across all age and, and gender demographics. They, they weren't more uh, one age versus another. And so this may not be for everybody in your sales journey, but there is a decent number of folks that are very interested in doing their own research, engaging, understanding their options before they wanna to talk to somebody. They know eventually they're gonna to have to talk to somebody. Um, and, and maybe that day will come that they don't. But, but I think this is too big of a deal to, to totally trust it uh, without a little bit of guidance and help. But recognize that, that there are key elements within this that, that need, to, need help. So how do we do it from a website standpoint? Well, this may be, you know, Captain Obvious type of stuff here, but you gotta tell them it's available, okay? If, if there is no indication whatsoever on your website that you offer this, you, you're, let's just start by saying, hey, you can tour. <laughs> um, and, and then, of course, that's a little different for most people. They've never, if they've never heard of this, never done it, you know, as much as I love Barrett and Enter Now as a brand, I'm not sure that every consumer in the world knows the name yet. Um, and when you just say, Enter now will, is available, they won't necessarily know what that means. Um, of course, you can brand it yourself like he was talking about, which is really powerful to make you differentiate from, from the builder down the street. But you need to educate them on what that means. And, and it needs to be more than just a one sentence. There, there needs to be something uh, beyond that they can click over to that helps them understand, gets them comfortable. What's gonna happen when I show up? You're really gonna let me in this house with nobody else there? You know, that, that seems a little unusual. Uh, for, for a lot of people. You need to sell them on why this is so great for them, the, the benefits, right? What's in it for me is the great marketing question, right? From not for the marketer, but for the buyer. Um, but it's private, no sales pressure. Yes, you will really be there by yourself with nobody telling you why you should do something right now. Um, the convenience, of course, the convenience is a huge selling factor of being able to go during the time. And I'll be interested to see at what point Barrett opens these things up at 2 a.m. for all these people that are doing their chats and want to tour in the middle of the night. We only have one client, actually, funny story. L they're, uh, a lot, um, they're a builder in LA, they build custom homes, and they have a lot of Chinese customers that fly in, and they're the only exception we have on our platform to allow tours <laughs> at night, because most of their buyers are awake at 2 a.m. Yeah. to see the homes, so just. <laughs> Benefits of jet lag. So, <laughs> um, just like all marketing activity, you have to have the call to action. It's got to be prominent. You've got to make the invitation. Um, schedule a tour is a great one. I think we want to try to make sure we get the self-service or the private in there somewhere too, if we can. So it's not just another appointment with the salesperson. Try to help differentiate that. Uh, but again, just starting with that opportunity. And here's one of the powerful things. When you integrate scheduling into your website, and into that whole process, you get the lead even if they don't show up. That's what we want, right? It's the lead. We get their contact information even if they don't show up. If something happens, they cancel, whatever. So all of a sudden, we've, we've moved further down that, that journey by showing them something that's intriguing and interesting to them earlier in the process. So as we, as we kind of move into Recognizing this as a lead capture, just a couple other thoughts, little seeds to plant from a, from a more advanced integration opportunity. First of all, because this is now lead capture, it needs to be um, integrated and configured as a lead capture um, conversion, sorry, went blank there, a lead capture conversion on your website in your analytics so you can track it. You wanna have those UTM codes coming so that you can say, oh, our Google Ads campaign, our Facebook efforts, our email marketing drove this many tours, this many scheduled tours. We need to connect those. Uh, Barrett talked about the integrations with the CRM. You want the scheduling piece to go into the CRM too, not just the, the tour. And now all of a sudden, you can do follow-ups and reminders. Hey, don't forget, you've got your tour tomorrow. You know, hope, you know, if you have any questions, let us know. You can have those drip campaigns that start to, to integrate. You can nurture. You can tell them, oh gosh, we saw you scheduled for this home. You might like this one too that's over here. And, and some of those you may also like opportunities. And you can connect it back to your sales now that's in your CRM and say, hey, this many of, of our buyers came through the touring process. And so you can justify some of those expenses because for some reason the marketing people always have to justify their expenses. I don't understand why this is so hard sometimes. Um, 
Finally, um, to really make it easier to manage, especially for those of you dealing with, with large amounts of inventory, lots of data integration opportunities, which is not very exciting for the marketing folks because you have to talk to the IT guys. Um, and you know, they're a little hard to talk to sometimes. Um, but we can, Barrett talked about some of those integration points. We can move data back and forth to keep the website up to date. Because as soon as we put this new little button on there, well, is that one really available for tour? Did we sell it yesterday? You know, what's going on here? And we've got to be accurate. You don't want somebody scheduling a tour for the home that's no longer on the market. That's just going to create disappointment and everything else. So we've got to be able to tie together, keep things up to date, accurate, and, and be able to move that data back and forth uh, between the platform uh, where all the technology is happening and keeping the website up to date. Perfect. Thank you. And I think, I, mean, I just love how you like drove home the point, we're trying to capture leads. This is like the perfect lead capture. And this isn't just a, a looky-loo lead, this is somebody with the intention to come see it. It's like the holy grail. So awesome, thank you.